two games, maybe two plays, the difference between a win and a loss. What do you do to get over the hump just making a few more plays? Well, I think everyone knows we can't can't keep turning the football over. Um, and we so you start adding up the mistakes. I'm not so sure we qualified for those two wins. Um, and uh, even though there was a, maybe a fingernail away from knocking the ball down and a goal post away from from the wins, it's encouraging that they're going to fight and they're going to finish. But uh, we, we can't stop making the mistakes that we're making, uh, particularly in particularly in the pass game, and uh, it's causing us some some uh, some turnovers that are costly right now. Can you describe how you're working the quarterbacks this week? Uh, no change from last week? Or has tried it's just day-to-day with Riley and kind of seeing how he's doing health-wise. If he's not healthy, I don't think we'll play him. Um, but right now it's Monday, and we'll just kind of wait and see how it goes. The, uh, the other guys practiced today and did a good job. So we're 100% confident that if we need to go out and start the game and play the other guys, we'll, we'll do that and be fine. Players say that you kind of got them together and asked for a lot more out of them today. Can you tell us well, what you share with them? Yeah, I, I just... It's just unfortunate that, um, and I'm the leader, so I'm the master of the design, and and uh, I think you're perfectly designed to get the results that you get. So the results that we're getting are not uh, are not what we want, and uh, so we've got to change the design a little bit, and, and I've got to ask these guys more, and ask more out of them in the way that they practice, and and holding themselves accountable, and our staff's got to got to be better. We got to coach these guys better so we can eliminate the mistakes that we're making. When you were watching Riley in that Boise State game, how much was, was it injury related? Was it decision making? I mean, could you tell as you're, you know, trying to figure out what to get, what yeah. to do to get the offense going? Well, he's a step slow, um, and I think, you know, he obviously is hurting, and so I think that's occupied more of his mind than I think he was wanting it to, and, and, and probably more than we were thinking it was. And um, he's our quarterback, and I trust him. So, regardless of of anything else, that's that's how I feel about him, and, and he he was confident that he could go out and play, and we let him go out and play, and by, you know the third quarter just was clear that um, in order for us to have a chance to win that game, we needed to taste him in the game, and Riley understood, so that's what we did. So that was your call as far as making that that change between the two. Yeah, I just called down to Coach Manuel and told him I thought we needed to make a quarterback change, and he's he's always been supportive of those decisions. We talked about it in advance. We knew that if it got to the point. We just felt like we weren't. Uh, we needed to make a change that we would do that. So that's when we made the decision. Whether it was the right time or not, that's that's neither here nor there now. But it was it was the decision we made at the time. What did you see from Taysom? What did you like? What does he need to work on? You know, as as he got that you know extended time. Well, the, the, the script and, and the offense is tailored towards Riley right now, and it fits what Taysom does. Um, and uh, there was a lot of things that were occurring. We'd had. I think four turnovers by the time Taysom had gone in the game. Uh, we couldn't afford anymore. And so there was some quarterback run game stuff. I, I felt like we could move the football and secure the football at the same time. And uh, goodness, the first play he was in the game, we fumbled it on the one yard line. So, uh, and, and eventually, finally, he was able to mount a drive and, 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 and you know, fight, fight our way down the field. And we just needed someone to come in and fight our way down the field, really, is what we needed. And, and he did it. As far as the offense goes, uh, I, I don't think you're pleased with where it's at for over the last couple of weeks. What needs to change as far as getting this, you know, to the high-powered level you want it to be at? Well, we're not executing the pass game very good, and that's um, that's our identity. At least that's what I'd like it to be. Uh, and I'd like defenses to feel threatened to, to defend the pass game while we're complementing it with a great run game. And. Uh, We've been in inefficient in completions, and uh, it's caused us to be in third and longs, which are difficult. And uh, you know, combination of, of a lot of excuses and explanations that really don't matter at this point. Uh, we've got to find a way to we've got to find a way to execute what we need to execute inside what we're doing. And if we need to simplify more and more, we'll just continue to simplify so that we can execute the scheme. Um, and right now, in the last two games. For whatever reason, we can add them all up, but uh, we haven't done that. As you look at Hawaii, uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at what they do, but what cha- or what challenges they present. What do you what do you guys need to do going up against that defense? Well, Hawaii's going to play hard, 
you know, they always do against BYU and, and expecting that they'll come in and, and, and play very physical football, that they'll be uh, extra aggressive and physical up front. They play a lot of man coverage. Uh, I would suspect that they'll continue to do that if they wholesale chains, and they wholesale chains, but as up to right now, they've played a high percentage of man-to-man -man stuff and blitz stuff, so that's different than what we've seen in the first four games. We haven't seen a whole lot of man-to-man -man stuff. Do you think uh, you can take advantage of that man coverage that they're going to be running this weekend? We're going to have to. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to take advantage of it in order to win the game, and, and there's there's holes in cover one. That's why a lot of people don't play it. When, uh, when you play man coverage, and as much as they play it, it's kind of a high-risk, high-reward defense, and and the risk is significant and, and because of because of the, uh, the blitz and then man coverage. If you get beat, there's no one left behind you, and that's the advantage of zone coverage. And uh, so, if we, if we can take advantage of it and create some mismatches and and uh, create some opportunities from open receivers, then we we should have a great a great outing on Saturday.